What, um, what we just heard from the president almost sounded like he's of two minds himself. He thinks that the EU is coming after our companies and just taking it for easy money, but he also thinks that there could be some monopolistic issues here. What do you think? Well, I think that's there. There are uh, a couple dimensions to this. If you if you back up from this, and what we're trying to do is eliminate some of the darkness that comes with social media, while keeping the good the good that comes of community and commerce. But there's no question. There's hate. There's uh, intimidation. There's falsity and so forth in social media. Now, I, I think the, in the big picture, uh, Becky, what we need is a mixture of self-regulation by the companies. We've left it since the 1990s to these companies. And they haven't done and, a great job. And they haven't done a great point. job. But that doesn't mean that it's got, it should be all done by government regulation either. And, it, and government regulations needs to be intelligent regulation. So we're looking for a mix here of self-regulation and regulation, trying to figure out what, the method for what each What needs one. to be attacked? I mean, there's so many ways that you can come at this if you're looking at government regulation. Uh, it, it, it's, it's what's going to guarantee content that is that you and I would regard as acceptable for ourselves and our, uh, our children. To, to watch. It's that simple. You know, when I was a kid, this is a long time ago, just to give you a sort of exaggerated example, and a couple went to bed on TV, mm. they had two single beds separated by a table with a lamp on it. And we Take think that's kind of silly now, but it was, it was viewed as necessary to protect public morals and children. Something okay, well, now like we have that. things like the Christchurch killings being broadcast live on yeah, Facebook. Yeah, yeah. So, and to get to the government side regulation now, I, I think what your correspondent said was, was right. This is, thank God, not something that's gotten partisan. I think people are mostly sort of bewildered by it, and they know it's a problem and they need to do something about it. Any trust is one tool. It's not the only tool. And in any trust, breakup isn't the only thing you do. Everybody talks about breakup. So, for example, just anybody who remembers AT and T, mm -hmm. AT and T was not broken up, but any trust was applied to it. And so, for example, it was told you have to string a wire to the end of a street to a little old lady on a farm because that's a public good, and the rate base people in cities who, who cost less to serve, sort of paid for that. And that was thought to be good for the country and the development of the, of the country. But it wasn't breakup. Ultimately, AT&T was broken up when the technology changed. But when the technology didn't permit that, it wasn't broken up. So, so it doesn't have to be breakup. It has to be some rules that the government applies. But that doesn't get the companies off the hook also policing themselves. So there's some mix there. Whether it's 2080 or 8020 is what the architecture is about. But we need to do both of those. Away from antitrust and back to national uh, security, when it comes to the big tech companies, which fall into that sphere and cross into that sphere of operating uh, around a national security issue? And which would you like to see do more to work more, more closely with the Defense Department as opposed to just think about the, their bottom yeah, line? Yeah, well, they all do. And, um, but I, I, it's, it's the big tech companies, but there's a whole tech sector that's driven by venture capital that is small companies. Uh, I want them to consider the defense market in their future. They don't, ha they don't won't necessarily serve the defense market, but I want them to serve. That's why I put an outpost in Silicon Valley when I was Secretary of Defense, why I put one in Boston, why I put, why I put one in Austin, so they can kind of get to know the Defense Department, because there's a whole generation of people who, unlike me, didn't uh, come up in technology where working with the government was part of of, of their culture. Well, what about Google now saying it's not going to renew its defense contract in 2019 because I, its employees uh, put up an outrage over the fact that they were working with the defense? Yeah, there was this. That's the question I'm asked most, mm. uh, Becky. What about Google? And I think you're referring to Project Maven, right? Which was an example in which some, a small number, actually relatively small number, of employees objected to a so-called artificial intelligence project. Uh, that Google's doing for the government, and Google withdrew. Now, subsequently, they've said that they will work for the government and, and that they're an American company and all the right, the right things. But if I were going to talk to somebody there, uh, uh, one of those people who objected, I'd say, look, uh, uh, if you don't want the Defense Department to do... You, first of all, congratulations, you're thinking ethically. 
That, so I share that with you. You ought to think ethically about everything that Google does. Uh, number two, uh, if you're worried that we're not going to carry American values into the battlefield, which, by the way, we do, um, then get in the game. Uh, who's better than you to participate and steer us in the right direction? And by the way, how comfortable are you, were, are you with working with China? Did and you, so you got to make them think about these things. They take a stance, right. and you got to reason with them and try to get them to a better place. We're running out of time. Did, did you uh, have anything to do with the U United Tech Honeywell not letting that go through? Is that your yeah? Uh, no. I, what I did way back then, that wasn't an issue. It was I uh, created the policy or enunciated okay. the policy. So is this that different than that? Because that didn't is, go through. Is this, do you think this one, I'm trying oh, to get I'm you sorry. back to the I United know, Tech. Uh, you know, you're not you going to get Panetta me back made to made comments, supposedly. Uh, you're not in a, in a position. Uh, well, you can say something. I, but I was the acquisition executive who wrote the who wrote, regulation. So that's why you can't oh, Yeah, that. and I, 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 I oughtn't to Can do I ask quickly about Boeing? Do you feel like the relationship between Boeing and the FAA was too close? Well, the, I don't know if it's a close relationship. I think that the, the, the FAA has weakened its own internal technical capacity to make certifications. And it, so it has ceded to the companies a lot of responsibility for doing that. Now, when you do that, inevitably, some of the incentives of the company, rather than the incentives of the FAA, kind of enter that process. And there's no question that's what we saw uh, going on here. So I worry about the technical health in the long run. Is that a funding issue or a leadership issue? Uh, it's partly a funding issue, but it's really a, uh, a, it's, it's one of those agencies that needs to kind of renew itself uh, technologically. Uh, it, they've had a new airspace system on the logs as long as I can remember, and it's never been completed. So it, 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 it struggles. As it, it's an essential function. But is it functioning the way we'd like now? No, and it didn't in this case as well. So I think that's the Boeing story.